Good morning. It's great to see the amount of red in the assembly. Very good. You got the memo. Very good. Uh, we confirmed 81 people this week, so a wonderful two celebrations, so that was great. And a number of them are here today. Uh, we had one funeral this week, Peter McCloskey, so we keep the McCloskey family and Peter in our prayers as we come to the Eucharist. We hosted uh, 25 pilgrims from uh, uh, St. Barnabas Parish in Scarborough. They're walking from St. Barnabas to Martyr Shrine in Midland. And on Wednesday, we hosted them here. They're up at Martyr Shrine uh, for yesterday and uh, celebrated there. So uh, we were able to host them on Wednesday night. And we hosted the Barry Police Service, an uh, informative uh, presentations on how to recognize and prevent being the victim of frauds and scams. Our Thursday movie was My Man Godfrey. And uh, on uh, Friday night, we had our Life Teen uh, bonfire up at Shannon's place, a, a great time, a wonderful time for that. Uh, today is Pentecost Sunday. In the confirmation homilies, I talked about how we have two vocations. Each of us has a vocation to holiness, and, uh, and then we live out that vocation through another vocation, whether it's uh, married life for the most part, or single life, priesthood, or consecrated life. So uh, uh, we celebrate all of those vocations as we come on Pentecost Sunday. I invite you to stand to sing our gathering song, number 416. 416 in your Catholic book of worship.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. We come together on this great feast, the Feast of Pentecost, the birth of the Church, the sending of the Spirit, to give praise and thanks to God, the giver of all good gifts. And so let us invoke and bless the name of God, the All-Holy, that this water may be for us a sign of the new life in Christ, which in baptism we have all received. O Lamb of God, by your sacrifice upon the cross, you have made fountains of living water spring up for us. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. O risen Christ, by the cleansing word of the Father's love, you restored the holiness of the church. first born from the dead, by the gift of the Spirit in the waters of baptism, you've made us the first fruits of a new humanity. Alleluia. Alleluia. Almighty God, in the sacred signs of our faith, you renew the wonders of creation and redemption. We give you thanks for this water, and we pray that all who have been born again in baptism may be heralds of the Paschal mystery, forever renewed in your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
joy you shall draw water from the living well of God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest glory on earth peace on earth praise to people of good will praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work, when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven 
living in Jerusalem. And at, the sound, at, and at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in their own language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and res residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So imagine the scene in Jerusalem. It's the Feast of Shavuot, which was called the Feast of Weeks. And it celebrated the giving of the law, the giving of the Ten Commandments, 50 days after Passover, that original 50 days after Passover. And the Jewish people fled Egypt after that Passover. They fled Egypt and Moses went up the Mount Sinai and receives the law. And it's God making a covenant people, you know, the, this covenant people 50 days after that Passover. So now, a thousand plus years later, we're in Jerusalem. Imagine the scene. The the Jewish diaspora, the people that have gone out over time from Jerusalem, are now making their way back to Jerusalem for this feast to celebrate the giving of the law. People speaking all kinds of languages, all kinds of tongues from all over the Mediterranean basin, if you will, where they had gone and uh, gone out, where people had migrated to, the Jewish people had migrated to over time. Coming home, as it were, to Jerusalem, coming home to bring the gifts of the first fruits of their harvest as a gift to God. And the disciples are in that upper room, locked in the upper room. They can hear those pilgrims, despite the fact that the doors are locked and the shutters are closed. They can hear those different languages. And just when it might have been getting boring, in that upper room, God breaks in. The Lord appears and and God breaks in and stirs things up with fire and wind. And I wonder if the pilgrims outside had heard that wind and maybe even seen the flames of fire And they would have known that those were connected with Elijah's departure. The fire, the wind and the fiery chariot. Disciples knew that some people thought that uh, uh, when Jesus said, you know, who do people say that I am? Some thought that he was Elijah come back. And so... It's as if the the walls of that upper room melt away. And the pilgrims hear those Galileans, those country bumpkins, 
speaking in their own language, speaking in their own tongue. They hear those Galileans and their fiery preaching. They hear it in their own tongue, and they realize that these men are not filled with spirits, but filled with God's Spirit. That Spirit was drawing them in their diversity together into unity. God's Spirit is drawing us in our diversity into unity. God's Spirit has come to all of us. God's Spirit has come to the young and to the old, to the Jews and the Greeks, to the slave and the free, to male and female, to the oppressor and the oppressed. In every language of the world, God's Spirit is speaking. And here we are, together from all nations, drawn together, that the Spirit may not leave the disciples where they were, that the Spirit may not leave us where we were. The disciples received this breath of life from the Lord, a breath that was surely evocative of the, the breath of the Spirit that hovered over the waters at the dawn of creation. That breath of the Spirit that was breathed into Adam and Eve. That breath of the Spirit that the Lord gives to forgive sins. They received that breath and they were transformed. And so they handed on that transformation. They had no choice but to move out into the world. They couldn't stay where they were. They had to move out into the world. Do we, do we still expect that God can come into the world, breathe his spirit, and send us forth? Do we still expect the Spirit to come here and recognize that in this room there are people that God figures He can work with? Yes. There are people here in this room that God wants to work with. That God wants to see transformed. Transformed not for our own sake, like the bread and the wine that we place upon this altar that are transformed into the very body and blood of Christ, not for simply our sake, but for the life of the world. God wants to transform us for those gifts of the Spirit, St. Paul reminds us, are given to each for the common good. For us to be transformed, not just for our own sake, but for the life of the world.
As a family of faith, we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As God has poured out the Spirit of Jesus to inspire our prayer, let us offer our priestly intercessions for the building up of the church, the needs of the world, and the salvation of all people. For the Spirit's gift of wisdom in guiding Pope Francis in his ministry of unity, and for Archbishop Francis, all priests, deacons, and lay people who minister with the Spirit's gifts to build up the body of Christ. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spirit of understanding for all leaders and nations that works for peace and goodwill throughout the earth, the earth. and for the spirit of consolation for all suffering, the effects of violence, wildfires, and loss of life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Spirit's gift of right judgment for all citizens, judges, and lawmakers in the decisions they face each day, and for those discerning their vocation in life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spirit of courage in working for justice and dignity for all human beings, including those who speak up for the defenseless, defenseless and wrong, and for those experiencing mental illness, including depression or anxiety, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Spirit's gift of knowledge for those preparing for exams or job interviews, and for journalists and writers called to inspire us with the best of our world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Spirit of reverence, wonder and awe in God's presence for all people and for the physical and spiritual well-being of all parishioners and for all who are sick, including those on our parish sick list, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, including Peter McCloskey, Deacon Robert McNeil, infant Amelia Grace Taylor, and for all who are mourning, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of majesty and glory, hear our prayers on this day that crowns our joyful Easter feast and open for us the fountain of living waters that the Spirit may enlighten all who wait in hope for the glorious day of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Father, the Most High. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every peoples, exalt in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by your same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Francis our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father. And so with courage and confidence we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. of the world. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the risen Lord who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force and that in this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated for a moment. So this week, uh, Wednesday evening, our Bible camp uh, planning meeting happens, and that's all the people who are involved in volunteering at Bible camp. That meeting is at 7 o'clock Wednesday evening. And Friday is our first Friday, and so we have Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament here in the church from after the 12.10 Mass until uh, just before the 7 o'clock Mass with devotions beginning at 6.15. And our youth ministry wrap-up uh, for Edge and uh, Mercy is at 6 o'clock in the parish hall on Friday evening. And Friday is busy because we have theology on tap at the Flying Monkey on uh, Friday evening at 7 o'clock. And a guest priest is speaking, uh, uh, Father uh, Ma, Eric Ma from uh, uh, St. James in Colgan. And uh, invite couples who celebrate a wedding anniversary in the month of May to stand for a blessing. Good, good. Let us pray. God, our Father, you created man and woman to love each other in the bond of marriage. Bless and strengthen these couples. May their marriages become an increasingly more perfect sign of the union between Christ and his church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So how many years? 23. Congratulations. How many years? 43. And how many years? 25. Silver. And how many years? 48. Congratulations. And how many years? 44. I, I know, don't worry. I just like how she looked at him for the year over there. How many years? 43. 43 in unison there. <laughs> and uh, in honor of all those wedding celebrations, marriage celebrations, hundreds of years, uh, in the parish hall, we've got hospitality, got all kinds of goodies from uh, the uh, school community of St. Marguerite Duville, and uh, uh, there's uh, even Pentecost cookies and Pentecost donuts, so you make your way in there and enjoy. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. And it's the Pentecost verses of number 388. 388, the Pentecost verses.
brightness of fire on those who await its appearing gift to whom the Lord had foretold suddenly swiftly descends hail the festival day stay to be hallowed forever day when the spirit shone bringing new life to the world daily the loveliness grows heaven now wears its gates flinging an Hail the festival day, 